Welcome to this very important session today. Um, <clears throat> as uh, you might have uh, remembered from yesterday's speech, um, I talked about the uh, basically going back to 50 years, um, analyzing the agriculture, analyzing uh, uh, the yields, um, and the green revolution impact on all agri products except for pulses. And uh, the reason I put that is to really show that the future is now the pulses. And <coughs> um, to design that, we have a great opportunity, which is International Year of Pulse. And I was privileged to represent Cecil Ziptic when the final vote took place at the UN to approve 2016 as the International Year of Pulse. And this vote was the culmination of hard work from many CISL's members, and their hard work afforded us this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to show to the world what pulses can do. For over two years, I have worked with CISL's members and other pulse organizations around the globe to bring support for this declaration together, and the moment that it was passed, was one of the best moments of my life. It would, be, <clears throat> it would be most remiss of me to miss at this point not to acknowledge the important role of the Turkish government in achieving this sp splendid result. It was the strong and decisive <clears throat> action that of the Turkish government in moving the motion at FAO meetings, supported by the Pakistan government, that brought this extraordinary success. We owe the governments of both countries our sincere gratitude. We should also remember to acknowledge the unanimous support given by the governments for all our <coughs> national association member countries during successive meetings at the FAO and the UN. Initially, many of those countries were not actually in favor of declaring an international year of pulses, ostensibly for largely economic reasons. It was only through the effective, strenuous, and persuasive efforts of many members of our executive, and in the case of Australia, um, that of our executive director, Gavin Gibson, that these countries eventually came to the view that they should vote in favor of the Turkish motion. Thank you all of you for this great effort. <laughs> now I can tell you straight away that the work just started. I can hear comments like, okay, we have the year, then what's next? So what does this mean for our industry? International Year of Pulse for me, is an opportunity to transform our industry from its traditional way of business into a key ingredient that in dishes eaten throughout the world. So it's a chance for transforming industry, really taking the industry to the next level. Like any opportunity, however, this one is meaningless without the effort to match. What we as members of the Pulse Value Chain get out of this opportunity will match the effort we put into it. And I truly believe there is no ceiling on what we can ac accomplish in 2016 and beyond. CISL has already put into motion coordinating work to maximize the impact of International Year of Pulse. We are working together with different national promotional groups, pulse organizations, and private sector players to maximize the International Year of Pulse impact. There will never be a better opportunity to increase global consumption of pulses. I do not need to tell you the man manifold benefits of pulses, but we sit before the greatest opportunity any of us will ever have to affect the change we want to see. The declaration gives us unprecedented ability to fundraise, to coordinate, and to have access to resources we will never have access again. If you are imagining events in your, in your head, think bigger. Well, this doesn't. 
of work. Well, sorry about that. <coughs> and uh, I encourage you to think beyond just us. The next slide, please. At this convention, we talk about the trade among the trade, but this is our chance to engage the United Nations, the health sector, consumer organization, environmental organizations, and more. All the governments of the world have agreed pulses are important. We have a great moment to reach out the entire value chain, from seed through farmers to processors and consumers. Our world is about to get much, much bigger. This year is not only going to be about promoting best practices at the point of production, not only about promoting the pulse as a source of food security and valuable nutrition in the developing world, not only about promoting the environmental benefits of pulse crops, and not only about showing consumers in developed countries the health benefits of pulses in your diet. International Year of Pulse will be about all of these things and more as we are aiming to get our message to the entire value chain. Next one. The work to make this year a success has already started, but we need you as CISL's members to get involved, to be ambitious in your thoughts about what the year can accomplish, and to recognize the value of what is before us. As I said earlier, what we accomplish with International Year of Pulse is limited only by the effort we put into it. We want your ideas and your energy, and together we will do the things that make an impact on the Pulse business. To do this, we will need the dedication of many. Already we have 29 countries talking about the International Year, and some 35 activities proposed. Volunteers have been coming forward to help in many areas, and I'm proud to say we are also getting other important indications of support. CISLS has already taken the bold action of committing $1.1 million from our reserve fund to work on activities related to the international year. We announced this in a personal meeting with the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, and he was very pleased to see this industry support. But we are not done. We are just beginning. In fact, I would like to bring up Carl Potts from Saskatchewan Pulse Growers. The Saskatchewan Pulse Growers have a tremendous leadership role, seeing the opportunity to support the International Year of Pulses. They have committed to provide $250,000 towards the administration of the year. <laughs> administration is one of the toughest area to attract funding. And we really appreciate their vision to make this kind of commitment. Carl. Thank you, Hakan. Uh, SPG is very pleased to, uh, to contribute to CISL's efforts related to International Year of Pulses, and we see it as a real tremendous opportunity to increase the awareness of and demand for, for our crops uh, globally. SPG is a, a, a growers organization, as, as the name uh, suggests, but I think the organization has a very long track record of making significant investments, particularly in the areas of R&D over the last 30 years. So we very much see this as a, an investment and potential game-changing uh, opportunity in our industry to take pulses uh, to the next level. I know CISLS has played a very important role in uh, having 2016 declared as uh, International Year of Pulses. And our investment is really intended to help ensure that CISLS has the capacity to provide leadership at an international level and to coordinate International Year of Pulses efforts. So we hope that by making this contribution, we're able to, to contribute to uh, the successful year of uh, International Year of Pulses. It also helps to encourage others uh, within the industry and beyond to think about how we all, all can contribute to uh, making International Year uh, a tremendous success. So 
Thank you, uh, Sislis, for your leadership on, uh, on this particular file, and we look uh, very much forward to working with everyone uh, to making International Year of Pulses a great success. Thank you. Well, many more coming. Here you go. EOP.net. In fact, uh, yeah, I would like to also announce the Chippewa Valley Bean has funded the, the launch of our new web for the year, eop.net. In the coming months, the website will add a multi-language capability and the resources section for people to download. Thank you, Cindy Brown, for this contribution, and I encourage you to visit the website. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> plus we have seen a tremendous gro ground swell of support from the board. At our meeting on Sunday, we agreed to launch a special members fund to gather resources for CISELs to support the international year, replenish its reserves, and engage in new activities. The board members committed approximately $400,000 during that meeting, and we believe more will come. Thank you all for your generous contributions. Let me encourage each and every one of you to join us with, this, uh, with us to make this year happen. You, you can see on the screen uh, the category of memberships. This is, a, this is going straight into the members' fund within CISELs. And this commitment is in just a few days Already we have raised a total of almost 1.74 million. 1.74 million. Those who were at the Dubai Convention in 2012, that was my first uh, year of the presidency, will recall that I talked of my dream. I said my dream is to see two out of the four dishes on the planet will be pulses. Now, I'm taking it to the next level. I add to my dream that two of every four chocolate bars, muslis, spaghettis, cookies, noodles, energy drinks, you can dream more, will all have pulses in it. This is my dream, and what's your dream? Now, I'd like to introduce Robin Anderson, who will be working with us for the next couple of years to make the International Year of Pulses a reality. Robin, please come and join us to talk about how we are going to achieve the dreams of the pulse sector. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Hakan. And uh, it's really because Hakan is a man with a dream that, uh, that we are all here talking about this today. And it's been a great honor uh, to work with the pulse sector over the past uh, 18 months. Uh, at the United Nations to get the International Year declared. And now we are moving into a new phase of work. And that phase of work will cover a whole range of actors that will span well beyond those in this room. So as you look at the Members Fund up on the screen before you, there is an opportunity for you as members to be involved. Some of you in this room are already talking about bigger leadership positions, like were taken by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers. We have identified 37 companies that will be a focal point for Cecil's fundraising activities. And they are companies that have sales of over $1 billion and are multinational in nature. And then we hope that all the national committees will have a lot of room to operate to raise the funds for their national activities in their countries with the domestic suppliers, growers, consumers of pulses. We'll also be reaching out to foundations and development agencies and looking for new and exciting ways to fund a range of activities that won't just come through CECLs. They will be activities that will happen around the world, on the ground, with farmers, with UN agencies, actually increasing the uptake of pulses, increasing the understanding of the role they play in nutrition, in protein supply for people who are on the front lines of hunger and need, and also, of course, for talking about the sustainability role that you have to play in things like climate smart agriculture. 
As we move forward, we are um, putting together a very capable team. Your executive selected an oversight committee, which is led, of course, very ably by Hakan. There couldn't be a more suitable person to be taking us through to 2016. He chairs the overall management arrangements, and we have Katja Sambin, managing stakeholder relations. She'll be talking to you a little bit more about the outreach that we are doing around the world. Thematic programming is being led by Gordon Bacon, who has done a very able job of setting up five thematic areas, and we have work groups just underway now to begin to talk about what we're going to do in each of those areas to make sure that this is a really exciting year with plans at an international global level on themes right from food security through sustainability. We also have a financial committee led very ably by Tim McGreevy. Tim, as you know, is the treasurer of Cecil's, and no one would be better to keep a careful watch on all financial matters than Tim, but he is also in charge of the challenging job of fundraising. So we've already got 1.74 million raised, and we have a target of over 5.1 million. So we have a long way to go, but we have a very, very solid foundation, and we hope that this meeting will be the basis for a lot more momentum in this area. And as I said, we have some early indications that we will be having some very good support. And all of that is going to further feed into work all around the world, which is being led by Cindy Brown, who's chairing the national committees. We have 29 countries who have indicated an interest in the national committees, and we'll be aiming to get them activated in a role where they can actually conduct national level activities in their country that support the international year. And I think that's one of the most important things, is that this is an act of coordination. This is not about command from the Cecil's board. This is not about command from the United Nations. This is about making a very, very big tent in which a lot of players will be engaged. We will have country governments very involved. We will have farmer groups involved. We will have NGOs that probably Cecil's has never worked with before involved and taking all of their capacity for advocacy and applying it to the discussion about pulses. It's a huge opportunity, and in this, we want your ideas, your thoughts, and you to feel empowered to go forth and do things at an individual company level as well as at a level of your national organization. And then we as CECILs will also be taking all of your best ideas, picking those we can resource, and making sure that we are moving a number of signature events and activities happening at a global level as well. And then all of those inputs go in to the United Nations, which will be coordinating yet another set of activities around UN agencies like the Food and Agriculture Organization. We're hoping to see a good involvement from World Health Organization. And of course, the World Food Program, which is an, Im an immense player in the Pulse sector and has a huge opportunity to, uh, to see pulses as a way to drive the health and well-being of some of the most uh, frontline hungry people in the world. So with that in mind, we have to think about implementation. And that's really the most important part right now. We have this gigantic puzzle to put together, and it's basically a blank slate. We have the opportunity to shape what we want to do, and we are very keen to, um, to move that forward and really find defining moments. As we do this, we will be looking for ideas, but we also want to provide an opportunity for synergies. We don't want to duplicate efforts. If people are keen to do similar things, let's group them together and see how they can make them effective in both their countries. And so why we've been doing this for the past three months is we've been mostly working on governance. We have created a whole series of documents, 27 documents actually related to governance that your poor oversight committee had to review on Saturday for nine hours to talk about how are we going to manage fundraising, how are we going to manage financial procedures, how are we going to reach out to stakeholders, how will we coordinate all of these activities. We created an operations manual that will, is live on a Dropbox and is available to all of you. We want you to have complete transparency about what's happening, and we want you to have, be able to replicate any of these systems that are useful for your national context. 
And then we are moving now into the planning phase. We have all of the national committees up and running. We have the work underway with the thematic areas. And we will be taking a look at the resources we have and the ways we can mobilize them. And we will be putting that in the context of the relations with the United Nations and making sure that we're aligning with the instructions they give us about the international year. As Katja will be talking about, this is a UN process and we need to be very cognizant that there are ways in which we um, must engage in this process that reflect a multilateral vision. So 2015 is really about getting it all in place. In October 2015, which is just 18 months away, we will be launching in New York at the UN General Assembly an International Year of Pulses. They announce it generally on World Food Day, just the year before. So we have a very short time to make all of this a reality. And I want you to see that as a launch point. The International Year is not the end point. It is the moment where we galvanize a whole range of activities. But the effort is really to give us an echo, a legacy from this year that will last for decades to come. This will be the point where we bring new partners in, we get those relationships going, and we get the funding and resources into pulses to make a difference in the long term. So my team and I, there will be five of us working out of the emerging team with you in the months ahead. Um, we are very excited to be part of this, and we very much hope that we can serve you well and lead to a, an excellent year. With that, I'd like to call on Katja Sambin, who will be sh talking a lot more about how we manage that in the context of all the stakeholders that we're working with. Thank you, Robin. And good morning, delegates. Have we got you excited about the Year of Pulses yet? Yes. You will be. So Hakan had a dream. And uh, the Oversight Committee is uh, working very hard to make it happen, and we need all your help. I'm quite lucky because uh, I happen to get a good job <laughs> on the panel, so I'm not complaining. So concerning outreach, I'm privileged to have the opportunity to pre represent the International Agri-Food Network, of which CISOL is a member. And uh, I represent all of you and our industry at the advisory board of the United Nations uh, Committee on Food Security, which is uh, a very interesting body within the United Nations, where pr private sector and uh, other bodies come together for a dialogue. And this means I travel to Rome a lot, um, and I have uh, learned uh, experience the United Nations to be, for sure, an extraordinary environment. It is a challenging environment. Um, it can be confusing and confounding. And uh, one thing is sure, it does move extremely slowly. So, but it is the environment we need to engage um, to make the difference for our industry. So every day, the United Nations tracks the number of the world's hungry. They are delivering programs to foster natural uh, rural development, and they tackle gender inequality. They are also feeding people. Specifically, the uh, World Food Program feeds 90 million people. And I saw that uh, Mitsugu from the procurement office is uh, attending the convention. I don't know if he's here at the moment. But welcome, anyway. They also bring a, hundred, a lot of people together. In fact, 193 countries voted in favor of the International Year. Now that we are at this point and uh, we celebrated winning the year, we have a big op opportunity, and this opportunity means outreaching all over the world to get pulses the attention they deserve. During the course of the past two years, Hakan, Robin, and I, and other CISO members around the world reached out to 80, mem 80 member states to get support for the year, which is a tremendous number of contacts and awareness. It is also a moment to enhance our reputation, because CISO stands for a level of professionalism that needs to be upheld throughout the international year. As we do this, we need to remain conscious of the United Nations rules. The International Year is their year. It is their declaration, and they are the guiding body. CISL comes to the table as a partner. 
We must be mindful, therefore, that the United Nations has strict rules about who can use their logo. This declaration does not mean, nor did it ever mean, we could run around sticking the United Nations logo on bags of pulses as if we were a band of peacekeepers in blue helmets. So we must get over this uh, feeling that we will ever be able to use the United Nations logo on uh, commercial material. The United Nations will convene an international steering committee sometime uh, late this year, and we are optimistic that CISL will be a part of it and will work with those who will be joining this committee. Once the group is convened, we will encourage them to develop a logo for the international year as soon as possible. Commercial entities are not allowed to use the United Nations logos, as we said, but we will be negotiating for CISL to be able to use it as a not-for-profit on some signature events that we will be holding. We know also that many of you are eager to have a logo you can use to celebrate the international year. For this reason, the CISL board has agreed to focus on a brand for pulses that will be rolled out in conjunction with international year and will live well past 2016, so a legacy to our industry. This work is being done in conjunction with efforts already begun by Pulse Canada to provide a new, more exciting identity for our sector, and we're very grateful for their help. This is just also just one step uh, in our ability to communicate well with others, and now it is the moment for us to choose the things CISL can bring to the international year. And it is also the, the moment to build the partnerships with those uh, who will help us achieve it. If we acted alone, we'd, it would mean to squander this opportunity. And as we move into partnerships, UN logo, partnerships um, beyond the circle of those involved in the Pulse value chain, there are many organizations that are needed as part of the international year activities. Just this weekend, we have agreed on a plan to reach out to a wide array of other groups, including UN agencies, uh, apart from FAO, a World Food Programme, and a World Health Organization. There are also many scientific bodies, including ICARDA, ICRESAT, and International Food Policy Research Institute. NGOs, including the Heart Diabetes and Cancer Institutes, and groups like uh, WWF, who could increase the power of our message on sustainability. Also, uh, value chain groups like the Grain and Feed Trade Association, the Seed Federation, and the International Food and Beverage Association, and also monetary funds like the World Bank and regional development banks, for example. But this is just an overview of more than 50 organizations that have been identified and prioritized as part of our work. We must make every effort to include whoever will be willing. It is important that our outreach efforts are coordinated and that we maximize the collective relationships of CISL's members. This is when we call on your help to actively take part into this process. We will need the support of many others to get the job done and to amplify the impact of the money we have invested. This is our moment to build bridges. And uh, on the note of building bridges, um, we build them on a pur for a purpose. And this is where um, Gordon Bacon will come in to explain uh, more about our thematic areas and how we will drive the substance of our work forward. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I uh, get very excited when I talk about pulses and when I talk about your pulses, and so I don't want to feel constrained by the podium. Uh, I'm inspired uh, and motivated by working with a team like this and, and a team behind all of these people who are helping to bring International Year of Pulses uh, into 2016 and make a real difference in the world. And on the theme of uh, excitement and being motivated, I want to acknowledge uh, something very South African. I started at Pulse Canada 17 years ago, and it was 17 years ago that the Cecil's Convention was here in South Africa. And the board members from South Africa at that time were really visionary. Their David Lever is visionary today, but visionary uh, back 17 years ago, 
when Dries Stein shared with me a book that was prepared by the South African Bean Board that talked about health and nutrition benefits of pulses and was talking about blood sugar control and was talking about the importance of pulses in the diet. I found that very inspiring uh, as someone starting out new at Pulse Canada to see the kind of work that had been done. And so when we talk about building uh, the activities around International Year of Pulses, I really want to acknowledge the decades of work that have been done by people in the audience and really what we're doing is picking up the torch that many of you started and lit many years ago. So it's my privilege to uh, lead up the theme area work around International Year of Pulses and I feel like the person who is in the control truck at a sporting event. I'm not on the field, I'm not the expert, but I get to work with a fantastic team and provide some direction and hopefully some coordination of what we're doing. So what are theme areas. When we talk about theme areas, I think what we're trying to do, if you can advance the slide for me, is what we're trying to do is ignite the passion behind pulses. The people in this room share a passion, but we have to go beyond the excitement that we can talk about in this room and create passion around pulses, and we have to ensure that we understand the wants and needs of people around the world, and particularly the group of people that we're going to be working with in International Year of Pulses. So who are the partners that we need to think about in terms of what their wants and needs are and how we're going to engage them in the process? Well, clearly, since International Years are a United Nations, specifically an FAO uh, designation, we have to understand what will ignite the passion in pulses at the FAO and the United Nations in general. Cecil's is a major sponsor. Our, our president was the motivating, the visionary behind having this. We have to find a way to have International Year of Pulses make a difference to your business and to have you engaged in it. Um, we have Saskatchewan pulse growers and we have pulse farmers in Australia, the United States, in Ethiopia. We have pulse growers in India, around the world, Turkey, Syria. We have to find a way to make sure that they see some value in all of this. And most importantly, in some respects, we have to make sure that the consumer is going to be motivated, that the behavior and attitudes about pulses that consumers have will change. And to be a messenger to consumers, we need to be working with food companies as well. So these are the audiences that we have to develop theme areas around to motivate and capture the world's attention. So let's just start with the United Nations. A quick look at the FAO website will show you that the FAO's opening statement is that achieving food security is at the heart of all of FAO's efforts. It's not a surprise then that the first theme area that I want to talk about is food security. People have a right around the world to many things, but a right to food, to adequate food, to safe food has surely got to be one of the things that uh, all of us can support along with the FAO. And I think that, the, as Hakan mentioned in his presentation yesterday, we really are at a transformational stage where we want to shift from addressing hunger to now addressing nutrition. The Green Revolution was about addressing a caloric deficit. What we want to help the FAO and UN and bodies around the world recognize, it's more than addressing hunger. We have to provide nutrition security. And how do we do that? We have to address pulse production in South Asia. We have to address pulse production in Africa. We have to develop the kind of platform that will allow food security to be a basic right and part of farming systems around the world. And we do that by growing more. We do that by reducing crop losses. And we do that by focusing on the majority of the world's poor, which are rural farm populations in developing parts of the world. This will be something that will get the United Nations and FAO excited, and it's something that, as Hakan pointed out yesterday, pulses have been left behind in the Green Revolution, and it's time now for Green Revolution 2.0. Um, the United Nations has also, in part of their development goals in the Millennium Development Goals, and now the development of goals to be their next target, has talked about environmental, uh, environmental sustainability environmental sustainability through resource management and the sustainable use of land, water, and biodiversity. Sustainability is also important to consumers in some parts of the world, in Europe, some parts of North America. People are asking more questions about where their food comes from and what impact it's having on the planet. 
therefore not a surprise that the second theme area that we have included as part of International Year of Pulses is productivity and environmental sustainability. And this is, as an agronomist, where I start to get really excited, uh, and time will restrict my ability to uh, get uh, too excited about it, but there's some really interesting facts about how much water it takes to produce a kilogram of protein relative to other plant bases of protein as well as animal proteins like dairy products or meat. We have a great story to tell that many people haven't heard outside of this room. Uh, pulses have this amazing ability to use nitrogen from the air as a source of fertilizer. Um, nitrogen fertilizer is the single largest nutrient required by plants and production of nitrogen accounts for 60 to 70 percent of the energy use on a farm producing nitrogen, transporting it, storing it, and applying it. Pulses, when we have the right genetics and the right uh, soil microorganisms, can produce nearly 100% of the nitrogen that they need. This becomes a goal that we can focus on to improve the levels of nitrogen fixation. Uh, and when we can include pulses in a rotation with cereals and oil seeds, we also have a, a a number of other benefits that we can talk about. So there is no doubt pulses are a cornerstone of sustainable food production in the world and plant-based protein. This is one of the theme areas that will also gain a lot of attention. Consumers clearly are interested in health and nutrition and food innovation is going to be part of our future as we think about water shortages and the discussions we had yesterday. We think about um, climate change and our need to be in control of the amount of non-renewable fuels we're using. Um, these are the things that consumers care about and again we have an amazing message. That I'm not going to get into all the details because you've heard bits about what pulses can do in terms of blood sugar control and diabetes, what pulses can, and the role that they can play in cardiovascular disease. And these two diseases are two of the four United Nations non-communicable disease priorities. Pulse crops fit perfectly into what the UN has already dedicated to be a priority to be addressing. Um, we have this dual challenge of undernutrition and overnutrition, and pulses play a key role in both of those markets. And the partnerships that we want to excite people with include reaching out to the corn, to the rice, to the wheat, to the oat and barley industry because plant-based foods are going to be a key to feeding a population. Pulses are great, but they're not complete nutrition on their own. And the Green Revolution has focused on cereal crops, which are not complete nutrition alone. But when we combine pulses and cereals, we have a combination that is now providing all of the essential amino acids that are essential, not only to provide um, growth um, but to, uh, a source of energy, protein, micronutrients, and, and key minerals. And all of this, I think, where the food companies come in, in my view, is that people's dietary habits change as they go through different um, economic growth and opportunities. Uh, people are eating more foods that are processed because it's convenient, because it's uh, affordable, and, and because their lifestyle requires that some of the processing of food is done by somebody else. So the opportunity to rethink all of the food items, and Hakan pointed out this morning, his vision is now that two out of every four of the food items up and down the grocery aisle or in any stall in a market around the world can now be reformulated to include pulses so that we're capturing the environmental health and nutrition benefits. Health, nutrition, and innovation are third theme area around pulses. I said we had to appeal to the people in this room, your traders. Most of us are involved in production and trade of pulses. We deal with government regulations and government regulations can be an important role, both at the national level and the international level. What we need to ensure and what the International Year of Pulses will allow us to do is ensure that we have regulatory environments that encourage fair and predictable trade. We can start with the United Nations and CODEX, the international body that was set up by FAO and the World Health Organization to govern food safety. Let's make sure that the UN in an international year has the regulations in place to ensure that regulations protect people's health but don't impede trade and don't create additional risk. This will be a huge help to the industry, not only in the markets that are exporting pulses, but pulses can be an example to pave the way for the export of 
tropical fruits, to, ex to pave the way for exports of products that are grown out by those same farmers that we want to have growing pulses. Um, I think pulses can be the role model in terms of how we can facilitate trade. And all of these four areas come under the umbrella of creating awareness. All of us know a lot about pulses. We now have an opportunity to communicate it out to the rest of the world and develop that contagious excitement about what pulses can do and to unleash the power of pulses around the world. And so this theme area is one that really brings us all together. And it's really where, as has been mentioned, we start to bring together these national um, activities drawing on the resources that we want to develop at the international level. So uh, the international group that I'm working to coordinate uh, will develop some of the tools, will provide assistance, and what I want to do today is make sure that uh, the invitation is clearly stated to all of you. These theme areas will become the powerhouses that they can achieve the potential that they have by having you involved or by having you recommend someone from your country to get involved in one of these areas. The door is open and uh, we're limited only by our imagination of what we can do. So the next step um, to ignite this power of pulses um, is to develop these teams, develop the work plans, um, s use some of the cash that uh, we hopefully can have, use the in-kind support that people will offer, um, develop uh, some deliverables on the international level and have inter uh, national groups and individual companies and individual grower associations uh, pick some of these up. We have additional things that we need to do research on. We need to understand more about pulses and blood sugar control. We need to understand more about what it is that environmental groups and food industry needs are in terms of sustainable measurements. We need to create knowledge, but we also have an a tremendous bank of knowledge that we already have and we need to communicate that knowledge. So the, the challenge that all of uh, I would throw to all of you who will get involved in this is to be part of the thematic areas that will both create knowledge and communicate knowledge. And uh, whether we're focusing on very technical areas like uh, health outcomes and, and what is the active ingredient in beans that provide cardioprotective health or whether it's communicating the things we know, we all have a role to 